here are my piggies enjoying their feed. Right, Ruthie? Hey, piggy. Hey, piggy, piggy. And they will fight over their feed, so. Yes, hi, Boaz. This is Boaz. He has the blue tag on him. When you buy a pig from a breeder, they usually tag them. I don't personally like it. And Ruthie didn't like it, so the first, first few days home, she basically got hers ripped out. And she now has, let's see, let's see you, I know. See, she now has, I know. She now has a hole on the back of her ear, and I, I personally don't like it. I know it doesn't hurt them, but I don't like it. So, um, that's Ruthie's ear. I mean, I guess they tag them to keep track of who's who. Um, I guess the blue one is because he was a boy and the yellow, um, she, Ruthie had a yellow on her and the yellow was because she was a girl. So it's just easy for them to grab. And um, I moved them up here and I, I didn't get a chance to bring up their bowls yet, which is fine. You could feed pigs right on the ground and they will not poop where they eat. They're very, very clean animals actually. The, misconception of pigs is pigs are dirty. They're only dirty because of the way you raise them. Um, but pigs like to sleep and eat where they do not poop. <laughs> so they like to find a spot and they usually just poop in one spot. So let's see if we can find that. Um, here it is. So they're basically pooping right here right now, right in this corner. And if you go around, um, and look at the rest of the garden area, you'll, you won't find their pig poop. They will not poop where they sleep, so their, their sleeping stays nice and clean, and they will not poop around where they're eating. And right now, I've been feeding them, I fed them here, so you see there is no poop. Um, and I've been feeding, I fed, fed them here today because it was a little bit drier, um, and they will, not, they will not poop there. And what's nice is whatever seeds they don't end up getting will we'll grow back and they'll, they'll be food for the chickens when they come through here. Ruthie will be our, well she's our second mama but our first mama passed away. Um, her babies were so big and they couldn't pass. It was very sad, traumatic for us and for the pig. So Ruthie is our second that we're hoping to breed with, with Colby who is our pig down below the bottom of the field right now. Um, we're keeping them apart right now and we're hoping to breed Ruthie. She is a year now and we're hoping to breed her um, towards the end of winter so we can have spring, spring babies. Pigs gestation time is like three months, three weeks, three days, like to the T I hear. So after we breed her, we'll have three months, three weeks, and three days to count down. <laughs> and uh, there she is. And Boaz, Boaz here, he's our, he's our feeder pig, which means he's going to be in the freezer one day soon. We're thinking of not letting him go through the winter and, and butchering him um, right before it gets too cold. And he's a sweet, he's a very sweet, sweet pig too. I love him. Right, Boaz? Yeah. Oh, look at Boaz. Boaz has really, really soft hair compared to, um, compared to Colby. Colby's is so rough. And Boaz, he had a blowout this summer of fur and now he's finally growing his, um, He's growing his coat back in for the winter. He kind of feels like a, you know, if you're a boy and you get a buzz cut on your head and you feel your head feels funny, this is exactly how Boaz feels right here. He feels just like getting a buzz cut, right? Especially down by his ears, but he's very soft down by his ears. And Ruthie, her hair is growing in again too for the winter and getting thick kind of very um very much like 
like Colby's actually. <laughs> yes, you are very much like Colby's. It's getting more like stringy, like hard. Pigs, you can use their hair for paintbrushes because they're kind of like a stiff, stiffer hair. And there's their feet. Okay, there. <laughs> I love the pigs. They're they're really um, they're one of my favorites. But I love all our animals. I really do. But I really am attached to my pigs. <laughs> yeah. This is my wonderful Colby pig. <laughs> I can't get enough of Colby. I love him. So we just gave him some, we cut the grass and we just gave him some fresh grass in here because he's eaten up all of, um, he's made a wallow. He's eaten up all of this area. Um, he's done an amazing job. And a few things he obviously doesn't like and doesn't care to knock down. Let's see that fence there. We're gonna connect it with the fence over there where the other two pigs were and get him to knock down the middle um, before we move him to his shelter for the winter. So we're working on a shelter for him, a new place for him for the winter. And then he will meet his bride-to-be Ruthie um, this winter. And hopefully they will have beautiful, beautiful babies for the springtime. So we're just waiting for her to get a little bit bigger and time it so that we can have babies in the spring. It's um, colder here where we live in Northeast Pennsylvania, so we want to time it so it's getting a little bit warmer. So we'll have them hopefully maybe even in the mid spring. We'll see. Um, yeah. So Idaho pasture pigs, hopefully this spring after their eight weeks with their mama, they'll be ready to find new homes. So if you're interested in an Idaho pasture pig, comment below and let us know and we'll put you on a waiting list for babies. And we'll keep you posted. But he is my, he's my baby. Right, Colby boy? He's my baby. He's such a good, friendly, friendly pig. Yep. And he hasn't been using his shelter very much. He actually enjoys to sleep under the stars. <laughs> so he made this mound and he sleeps in there. So I put a bunch of grass right there for him. He'll eat up all the grass I gave him. And we'll give him some more tonight. Idaho pasture pigs really enjoy fresh grass, especially Colby. He loves when you pick and give him fresh grass. Right, Colby? You're my boy. Life and self slide. <laughs> Life and self slide.